And we're back with another new episode of Just Create. Thank you for joining. Once again, I'm Thomas Duran, uh, owner and founder of TD Films. And uh, I am very excited about starring a new series of Just Create episodes. And what better way to kick it off than uh, bringing on a, uh, a not only a, just a great friend, but uh, just an amazing individual. His name is Will Shaw. He's from Capsule 5. And uh, he has an amazing story about becoming from going, being from the NFL to his entrepreneurial and then also uh, how they utilize video within their business. So uh, really excited to get things started. So without further ado, let's welcome Will Shaw. What's up, buddy? How you doing, man? Hey, brother. How you doing? Uh, thanks for having me on here, man. Oh, man, it's my pleasure. It's a long time overdue. Long time overdue. So, um, But, uh, dude, first of all, uh, for the people that may not know you as of yet, uh, kind of tell us a little about who you are, where you came from, and, and what you do. Sure, sure. I'll, so I'll try to I'll try to keep it brief. I uh, I started. Uh, I guess where we'd start is I played in the NFL for about a season and a half. Bounced around between the Steelers and the Eagles, and uh, got to do that. And then uh, got injured and moved back to Arizona, and got into the digital marketing space. And from there, I got learned a couple of different CRMs. Got into digital marketing. Um, and uh, co-founded a uh, marketing automation company based around servicing insurance agents, Capsule 5, got into uh, real estate, got into a couple of different things all around the marketing and digital marketing space, and basically uh, spent most of my time with Capsule 5 and had my hands in a couple of different things. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, you're always willing and dealing when it comes to businesses, man. You are always, always, always creating new, new opportunities, new, new avenues, and and that's something I've always been uh, admired from you. Because honestly, it's one of those things. It's like if I wasn't doing what I'm doing right now, I have no idea what I'd be doing. And 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 I know you kind of went through that same sort of that same phrase when you played football all your life, and then there was no more football, and then it's like now what? And so, kind of tell me a little yeah. bit about that journey. Um, or tell us a little bit about that journey where, where you really had to recreate yourself. For sure. Yeah, it was, it was rough. I mean, I spent my whole, I mean, my childhood, my teenage years, and then my young adult life, my entire adult life just focused on one goal, which was playing football. And I, I dedicated my entire life to that one aspect. I was a football player and that's all I was. That's who I was. And that's what I was about. And, uh, you know, when that was taken away, it, it was, it was rough. I bounced around. I, I did some dead end jobs just to, to figure out what it was that I was going to be, who I wanted to be. And probably something that's, I mean, I'm still trying to figure out who I am as a person, but it took me a long time to figure out who I wanted to be, who I was and, and what I wanted to be known for outside of football. And I didn't want to just be that guy. I didn't want to go back into coaching. I wanted to do more in this life than just play football or just be about football. So, I mean, I, I bounced around some dead end jobs and different jobs, you know, sit, doing sales. And of course, I mean, I, 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 I first in a lot of those roles, but I, I just, it wasn't my passion. Um, I mean, started an executive recruiting company, started a real estate investing company, bounced around, ended up at Infusionsoft, um, you know, went through that and, and kind of grew in that role and kind of went up the corporate ladder there and then realized there wasn't much more that they had to offer me. And so I left and, ba and created a, they basically infused itself consulting business that turned into a digital marketing company that turned into an ins insurance verticalized solutions along with a digital marketing company. Now I'm back into real estate. Now I'm back <laughs> into doing marketing. Um, and, and now I'm back into the real estate industry, uh, on multiple foes, folds, both on the investing side and putting deals together and things like that. But also my wife's a loan officer and, and, uh, and, and I've helped her start a loan officer company. Um, and doing marketing for that and creating a network of uh, loan officers and real estate agents. So, I mean, it's, it's been a journey to say the least. Yeah, well, it, that's for sure. But it, what's amazing to me is that, uh, and one of the things that how, you know, 
we obviously we've kind of gone with the last couple of years our, our, the friendship that we developed we're kind of part of a mastermind group together we bounce ideas off of each other but sitting there and, and one of the things i'm always just impressed is how how much you you know and and then and then how much you just are like look i have this idea and then you just go for it like you just take action and that's just the like everything you've done is just you're like Look, I'm going to try this out. I don't know anything about it, but I'm going to learn it and uh, just take action, take action on it. And stuff that's not like maybe maybe for you may seem easy to learn, but it's stuff that I'm like, man, how do you just take the time and learn everything that you've known? I mean, even just like Infusionsoft software and my stuff. I've tried, I've tried to take a peek at that kind of thing, and and I have no, I like, I, I lose it. I'm like, I'm out. I'm done. I'm done. I don't want to do this. You know, I, yeah. <laughs> I need you guys to work on it for me. You know, it's always been a sore spot for me. But, uh, you know, you're just like, doo, 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 just try, try to get in. Where did that drive come from? Where's that? Where is that? That I mean, obviously, dude, you're oh, extremely gosh. smart. But where does that where does that passion come from? Where I, you just get that my, shit done? Uh, my life is like a walking cliche. Like it's a sports cliche. Like, right. Like it's just <laughs> like I love I love quotes. I love cliches like that. Like I, I'm all about it. Um, you know, like. Like, like my father taught me as a kid, like if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing right, right? Like I'm, I'm a big fan of The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, and like uh, from a kid, I always had a mentality of being the hardest worker in the room, right? Like if you worked, if you outworked everybody, then you would be more successful than everybody, right? Like it, it, I just had the mindset, if I just put in, if there's no substitute for putting in the time or the effort to perfecting your craft, right? Right. And so my mindset from the time I was a kid was if I outworked everybody, if I, I would become better than everybody and I would get the same opportunities as everybody and I would flourish in those opportunities because I was more prepared and put in more time and put in more effort. And that was just my mindset from, you know, you could go all the way back to whether it was in football and I was, I was doing two a days all summer long and nobody, nobody, I, I walked in, we would do 6 a.m. workouts um, all summer long. And people would show up at 6 a.m. and they'd see me tearing off my sweater because I just, I just did a full workout in a full body suit starting at 4:30 a.m. So I'm going on to my second workout when they just worked out. And so I was mentally more focused and more disciplined, and I had a mental edge over everybody because I knew nobody else was doing that. And then I showed back up at four o'clock in the afternoon to go do a secondary workout. So I just knew nobody else could see me and whatever I was doing. So I took those same principles that I learned in football and I applied them to the digital marketing space. And I just, whether it was going through courses or education or tinkering or watching videos, or, you know, I always try to surround myself with people that were more successful, smarter than me and try to pick up as much as I could from them. And, and, and that's basically what it is. I think last year we, we, uh, we were working on a new software and it kind of floundered. And so I figured out and I spent basically two, two days I dedicated a weekend of just figuring out how to rewrite a CSS script. And I never, I don't know code and just writing CSS script script and some HTML to rewrite an overlay an application on top of another software to create our, what we were trying to create for six months. And, you know, I did it in a weekend and we launched that and it was a successful business and it was just more of a, a test to see what we could do. And instead of just waiting around for somebody to do what we wanted to do, we just went and made it over a weekend. Um, and it was just, it's just that kind of effort and dedication and focus. I feel like that I've been able to, that I learned probably from the sports and, and my upbringing. And, you know, I come from a military family and just applying that into the, you know, the digital marketing space and the software right. space and the things that I've done since I left it, it as, as transferred, I feel like pretty, you know, has been able to lead to that. Well, no, I love it. And it's, it's just that blue collar work your ass off mentality. And I mean, you're from originally from Maryland, right? So, I mean, that's kind of, or Baltimore, right? Or yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm from the Inner Harbor in downtown Baltimore, and you know I, I, I wear that proudly. And that's a it's a blue collar city for sure. Yeah. It's a hard nosed city, and um, you know I think I think the West Coast guys are a little bit softer. <laughs> but uh, I'll tell you what, I don't. I'm not going back to the East Coast anytime soon. I'm a you, I'm a West Coast. Bro, guy you now softened sure up with life. us. You know you love it. You know you love it. I love the West Coast vibe, man. <laughs> the East Coast guys, man. We do. Uh, I threw myself in it. I like we're assholes, uh, and I don't have a desire to go back to it. I love the West Coast vibe. Yeah, 
No, that's fantastic. And uh, so it, what, <laughs> that's funny. I love because, stereotypes. I think uh, it, I think it's all funny. No, I get it. I mean, I'm, I've been born and raised here in Arizona. I obviously wasn't in California, but I'm a West Coast guy. And, and meeting another East Coast person, it's like, or with you, I'm like, dude, you're like, man, I got to pick up my intensity. It's if it, 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 You know what, though, man? It's a great example. And you push it pushes me. It, it really does. Seeing the work ethic that you guys do. I mean, how many things that you you say you're going to do and you just do it. It's just like, damn, like I. There's just no excuse. You don't allow other people to have excuses, which is a great. Yeah, I don't. I don't believe in excuses. Yeah, it's. I mean, a million things are going to happen in life, and I believe we are all dealt a different hand of you know. In, it's like a card analogy for me, like, right? Like I said, my life is a walking cliche. Like I love it, <laughs> um, but I believe we're all dealt a different hand. But it's all up to us and how we play it, right? And so if you want to sit there and complain about, you know, ex- or have excuses or, or situations, like we're all going to face, ad- face adverse adversity at some point. It's just about how you respond to it. And it's all the, all the way to being late. Like I can't, none of, none of our team here at Castle 5 is late because I'm prepared to be 10 minutes er- early always. So if we hit traffic or there is an accident, then you're still on time because you're prepared right. to be early. Right. It actually reminds me of a, uh... There's this uh, documentary I did. It's like this one day. It was like following this uh, roper. He was a roper. His, his name is Jake, uh, 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 a a um, world champion roper in healing and and shoot, I, I I forgot the terminology of it. I'm not a roper, so you know I'm only picking up for what sure. I picked up from it. But uh, he uh, he 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 was amazing. He was like, look, he's like I I get up before the sun. The reason why I get up before the sun is that. I beat the sun. So if there's anything that I do that day, I won. I won something and I beat something and that's me beating the sun rising, right? Like he is like at the very least that's that's already a win. The moment that I wake up, I wake up before everyone else. I wake up before you know the sun rises and it's it's a win like i'm beating something so you know he talks right. about loss and failure and things like that and and in that his his sort of he has that same work mentality it's just like look if i'm going to beat anything I, this is the one thing i know i could control i could beat you know and and so yeah um it's, you know it's one of those things because i know you i don't know how you do it and it's something i've been trying to work on myself is you definitely have that early morning routine i, I own mornings man yeah. i i win in the morning like i can't I can lose afternoons because it, it, I believe in that mindset. There's another one that was done by a Navy SEAL. I can't remember his name. Um, and he talked about the art of just making your bed every day. Um, because just giving yourself that win and making sure that that was done starts off a trigger of events in your day of just winning and perfecting stuff. Right. So like for me, like I'm up every morning at four thirty, and I think part of it is like a mental discipline and keeping that edge just from the mentality. Like, you, if you're weak minded, you can't wake up at four thirty. So you can't, you can't see me how I start my day, right? Right. So that that's part of it. But like the other part of it is, if I'm going to get through my entire routine that makes me win today, whether you know meditating, taking time to read, taking time to pray, you know, taking time to go to the gym, taking time to spend the morning with my wife, taking time to spend the morning and take my dogs on a walk, like that's a lot of time. So I win my mornings. Like nobody stops me in the mornings because nobody's up at four thirty. Nobody's up at five thirty at six thirty, seven thirty. Nobody's really bothering me until around eight a.m. But eight a.m. I've already accomplished three and a half hours worth of work. I'm already through all the important things in my day. By the time people start their day, I've already done everything that I need to do that day to make sure I have a successful day. It's already done. Um, so everybody's starting their day at eight a.m. And I'm I'm already done with the important things. And now I'm moving on to the you know the secondary things, which is, you know, you know around eight to eight thirty, moving on to the the emails and checking in and going into meetings and things like that. So by the time I hit noon, I've already had a full day in. So everything that I accomplish after noon is bonus. So if I decide to go golf that day or you know go to the bar and hang out and go to a meeting or, or whatever it is, I've already had a full day. Yeah, that, that no, that is a. That is something that uh, I, I, I truly believe in. Um, not necessarily practice it in it, but truly believe in and something that I, I really would, uh, I encourage everyone with, to try. Uh, to, to, it's staying that discipline. And that's that's the hardest thing. And I think one of the things that I, I've always, I've always, it's funny, like the show's called Just Create. And, and, and one of the conversations that we have had is you, you've always keep on telling me is like, 
dude, I'm I, there, no way I have a creative bone. You think very analytical, you know, very structured. And, and, and I keep on telling you, like, dude, are you kidding me? Like, think about all the, the, the different businesses that you've created. Think about all the different, uh, you know, it, things that you've built. I mean, that <laughs> I mean, just even as simple as building that yeah. uh, that fireplace, you know, that takes a level of creativity. It's, it takes a level of creativity to be able to uh, stay disciplined, to be honest with you. And so, um, you know, where 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 I was going with that, I don't know exactly, but other than the fact of just that discipline that I think is 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 huge and is key, what keeps you, what keeps you, how do you keep that individual discipline? I mean, because, you know, for me, I know it's, it's hard to stay disciplined within yourself, right? It's that internal motivation. Like what, what keeps you that, sure. that self-discipline? You know, it, it, that's that's a really that's a really good question. It's funny that you mentioned that I'm a that I, I don't give myself enough credit for being a creator. My wife says the same thing. Like I'm one of the big one of the best parts of my day is I usually take dinner and I love cooking. And I didn't I didn't love I couldn't say that two years ago. And like I'm on the verge of trying to create my own YouTube channel of cooking, like yes. creating like my own version of chopped and like adding in different whiskeys and wine because I'm a you know I, I love my wine and my whiskey and my scotch and my cigars and stuff like that and incorporating it all. But I do love it, and uh, I didn't realize how much joy being in that creative mindset gave me until recently. And you and my wife specifically both try to pull that out of me, and I think it's funny um, because you guys both are always on me about not giving myself enough credit for it. But how to create that mental, like keeping that mental discipline and that intensity? I I don't know if I have a great you know answer to that. Part of it in life, like. Uh, you know, I always had this mindset of, all right, when I reach this point, when I reach this point, when I reach this point, it was always this goal, right? right. And it was a natural driver. Like, I'm just not going to stop until I reach this. And it was just a natural driver, right? Like, you just, you're going to keep going until you reach that goal. And the reality is when I feel, you know, I, I think that's the, you know, common a lot of, amongst a lot of speakers and influencers and um, like Gary Vanderchick or Vanderchuk, like right. he's very much like that and just grinding and he reached that goal and I think that's a really popular way to go about it but it's, I think it's because it's an easy mindset to have in my opinion because at some point you're going to burn out you're gonna, you're not going to enjoy life and that that's what happened to me right like once I had this goal to football and I no longer had that goal it was like well what's my next goal it's like well I have nothing like I, I really had nothing of substance it was just like alright well I need to figure out how to make those same type of pay- paychecks I had in the NFL and it was nothing of sub- substance, right? And it was just right. driving to that goal, and I was just hitting dead end after dead end, dead, dead end, and I was just burned out. I was tired. I wasn't. I wasn't motivated anymore. And what I, you know, and this has been a big transformational journey for me personally because I realized life is not about the destination, but it is about the journey, right? You're not going to take all of your accomplishments with you. You're just going to take your memory right with you which is all about the journey it's all about the life's experiences so i flipped the whole script in my mindset of it's not about the goal and the destination it's all about the journey and the experiences and the people you meet amongst the way so for me that's been a big motivator because i walk into every day and just realize that this is a perfect day for me i'm a big religious guy um but it's a perfect day for me and all these life experiences that happen today good bad or indifferent are experiences that i get to take from and i can either take the positive in it and the negative of it and I see what it transforms into me. And they're all different opportunities. That's why I've enjoyed connecting with people and having my hands in so many different things because they just keep leading and expanding into a million different wow. things. And it's been it's been a, a really cool journey for me. I've also realized the desire that I have to, to do a bunch of traveling um, um, and reading. I spend at least one hour reading multiple books a day. Um, you know, whether they're entrepreneurial or ph- philosophical or even Harry Potter. And... I just, I, I get so much enjoyment out of it because it's these different journeys and experiences that you're on. And I just try to live, you know, it's been a big transformation for me about not, not being about the goal and the destination, but in the moment and being about the journey and seeing what, you know, kind of where that takes you has been a lot more fun to me. It's like the difference of going right and traveling a two week vacation with a travel agent and saying, Hey, this is what we're going to do and have everything preset instead of it's like, all right, I'm just going to, you know, just me to Europe and I'll figure out my trip for two weeks. Wow. And that's what I've changed in my life 
and being such a structured financial analytical mindset has been a challenge, but so rewarding for me at the same time. I think that's what's kind of helped me keep my edge is because you can go through life and never be complacent and always drive towards something. But if that's the case, how are you ever going to be happy and appreciate what you have in the moment, right? Huge. So for me, it's been about being happy and appreciating what I have in this moment, but still having the ability to realize that as I continue to do that, it leads to more opportunities, which creates a greater journey for myself. Man, that that is some powerful, powerful stuff. And, and it, it, honestly, that actually is that message right there that you just said is is feels like it was like the right timing just for for even uh, for me to hear that, you know. And because there there's this last summer, I've taken a little bit of time off, and it's been great. But to kind of like refocus, re-energize, and 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 just uh, and recollect myself, and seeing like, all right, you know, where am I going? What were the th- areas I need to focus on? And even during that, there's been right. some struggles, things like that. But um, th- it, it that was a beautiful reminder. You're right. It is. It is about the journey. It's about the people that you meet with in that journey, and that's the how I. That's that's how I originally started off when you know starting this business or started this show. It's 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 not about trying to get this show to be a certain place. It's about just taking the opportunity, meeting new people, talking with people, communicating with people. Because uh, I you know just given that open segment where you know there's it allows to see how other people work and the mindset and you know that type of thing. It's just start just even with this show established some new relationships and it's just it's been amazing. Um, just op- what yeah. kind of opportunities and doors open up just by doing something or creating something, not for just for um, for an accomplishment, but that journey towards that accomplishment and it's like so much more. Right. Um, now, with that being said, so there was a there was a, there was another question I had went during that, but I forgot. Oh, the book. Uh, you say you've been reading a book, so or you've been reading a lot of books. Have you have you heard of Jordan Peterson? I don't know that I have. Okay, so th- but I'm also not great with names. All right, so there's this guy named Jordan Peterson. He was a professor in uh, Toronto University. Um, a lot of I I, I absolutely love this guy. He is a uh, He's a neuro uh, neurologist, a psychologist, and, and it, it, it just just a really, 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 really bright guy. Um, a lot of a lot of people hate him because he's not he's not bowing down to, you know, certain uh, requirements that Canada has now to say people's pronouns that they want, things like that. So you know, there's it's gotten a little bit political, but his stuff and his his teachings are just absolutely exactly align in alignment with what you were just talking about making the bed early you know dealing with uh um you know how can we start doing stuff in the world if we can't control our own home you know clean your room type of thing you know right you know that type of thing but so he has a book called 12 rules of life here i'm going to look it up right now i can't look up on my computer but that's okay let's see here jordan peterson uh da, 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 da. Jordan Peterson book. This is my show, so I could do this. It's not a big deal. <laughs> uh, why? You, I don't, Twelve rules for life. Uh, Twelve rules for life, and an antidote for an antidote to chaos. And uh, Twelve rules gotcha. for life, an antidote to chaos. Um, shoot, man, I'll let you even borrow the book that I bought and, and, uh, have you take a read at it because I think it would really, uh, everything that you were just talking about, it really hits that. And, and, and a lot of people are like saying, this is common sense, but he's like, yeah, it is. But people f- have forgotten the why behind common sense. Right. And, yeah. and so he explains and just goes into detail. It's, it's, it's absolutely there's remarkable. A, there's a big theory out there, uh, from philosophers stating that because things have gotten easier, it's made us more prone to cut corners. It's the same reason that buildings built in the 1200s, 1300s, the 1400s, the 1700s still stand today in some scenarios, even though there wasn't any kind of, even there's even proof of buildings standing thousands of years before formalized math was available to early humans, right? And not to get get religious and science and things like that, but, because they had to be so perfect in their overall design and concept. 
Whereas now homes can't stand for 60 years because we cut so many corners, even though we have better material, better math equations, better technology. And it's because it's just made us easier. It's made it easier to the point where we're too lazy or we cut corners because it still works good enough. Um, there's a lot of theories out there regarding that. Um, and just the way we build houses is because it's gotten so easy. We just overlook it. Wow. Yeah, no, that's it. I, I believe in that theory. I think that's true. I think there's a lot of truth in that. And, uh, you know, it takes guys like you and, and, uh, in, in, in people that are wanting to push the limit and continue to, to, to always try to expand on, on something greater. And that's what it takes. And I think it's, uh, I think there's a lot of truth to that. So kind of making a switch over here. So capsule five, what, what are you guys doing with capsule five? Yeah, so there's two sides to our business. One side is we provide uh, automation and marketing solutions to insurance agents. And the other side is we provide uh, digital marketing, full digital marketing services to small businesses. That's fantastic. And then with with that being said, now you guys, and I know this for it to be true because I'm going to want to help you guys shoot your video, <laughs> but you guys use definitely a lot of video content, especially with uh, yes. clients to uh, testimonials. But what I really like to dive into is that um, with just even the client's testimonials, like how you have used that because you've used it in five, six different ways of marketing for yourself. Right. So kind of tell me a little bit about yeah. those testimonial videos. Yeah, we use video everywhere. Um, and there's multiple reasons to that. I think uh, a big time that we're in from a, from just a, you know, in the current times that we are in in business is storytelling is a big deal. Um, another example, my wife is the global marketing coordinator for Isagenics and she implemented them releasing video for all of their new product releases across all the different markets. And it's been a major success. And it's something that a corporate, you know, Fortune 500 company wasn't doing, for example. Wow. Uh, so people still aren't doing it, but every time they do it and they look around, it's major success. I mean, there's multiple reasons we want to do it. We want to do it from an advertising standpoint because Facebook's going to promote video more than just images. Yep. Because, image, or because the video is more engaging. It tells a story. It, it better reflects who you are as people being more personable. I mean, there's a million reasons why. I mean, our client testimonial video is everywhere from our our homepage on our website to in our in our marketing automation to our Facebook ads so we have videos just that you know if I was to stand here with my iPhone for example yeah. and I'm walking and talking because I can get out a very personal message that gets to the point way faster than you know me trying to type up an email and a text that takes you know a full page for you to read in seven minutes I could take that and, and get it in front of you in the right way in about 20 seconds um, yeah and I think, I think also people about, too. Especially in the competitive. Oh, what I was saying. I also think too is that I know for me, I I rather be able to listen and hear and see versus having to stop and read text or read an email. Like like it's like oh right. you know I don't want to go through this. Just show me. I video. mean, every statistic says it's more valuable to do that. And I think just from being able to like business, the the realm of business has changed right in the last ten years. And it was it was a more of a corporate dominance 10 years ago, but in today's day and age, it's all competitive, smaller agencies. Right. So what are you doing to put your agency in front of everybody else? Well, it's gotta be video. I mean, you see it massively in the real estate market, right? You know, everybody's doing video for homes and oh, yeah. properties and things like that. It, video, it, if you're not using, I don't care what realm of business you're in, um, you have to be using video in your business because you need to be able to tell that story, whether you're going B to B or B to C, and when you're selling, I mean, I'm working with nonprofits and we're using video. One of the most successful nonprofits I've seen is um, OP. It's Oceanic Preservations. Um, and they do videos around marine life. And uh, they have such an engaging content. They have a massive following because they they produce basically many videos. Um, and they didn't mean to. They didn't intend to. Um, but that's just what they do. I mean, videos across whatever realm you're in is going to help you grow your business and reach the audience you're trying to reach regardless if it's a non-profit or for-profit business, whether it's digital marketing, software, consulting, it, it just doesn't make a difference. Yeah. And I love the fact that how you brought up the point of even to the point where you take your phone and you start just talking and giving 
you know, uh, either a story or, or addressing a, an issue or, you know, because like a lot of people don't understand. I, mean, I guarantee every business gets the, all the same questions repeatedly over and over again. Right. Uh, yeah. Why not do videos? 100%. Do like a question and answer. But instead of reading the text, there's a video for it to answer your question. You know, and, and yeah, I mean, our, our sales team shoots videos for every proposal we send out. They answer all questions beforehand. And I mean, one of the biggest hiccups I always or holdups I see in videos, people don't want to be in front of camera. Yep. And like, you know that about me. I, I, I told you, hey, like, we'll shoot somebody else on the team because I'm not going in front of video. <laughs> and now I'm, you know, talking about doing a cooking channel from my kitchen. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's completely changed. And now yeah, I'm walking around and shooting video because, yeah, um, first of all, I've got them more comfortable with it, but I've seen the value in it and being able to tell a story. And I get to be me. You know what I mean? A lot of. Right. You know, I spent a lot of my life trying to fit into a specific mold, and now I'm in this point in my life where I get to be me, and there's no better way to be you or tell your story or what it is you have to say than video. And I used to hide away from telling my story. I didn't want to talk about football or this or that, and now I'm really, you know, open to, to sharing that type of story. I've seen, I've noticed that transformation. You're really owning that story, and I think it's just, you got to, you know, I had an, another, uh, 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 person on her name was Heidi. She's like, own your stuff, own your own your story, you know, and and uh, sure. it, it's tr truly, truly something I think everyone should do. I mean, be able to try to do no matter how uncomfortable it is. And actually, that kind of brings up a good point. Like, what would you say to people that are in that uncomfortable position where they it is a fearful? I mean, looking at this camera right here, it stares at you, but it ain't it, like there's no motion to it. So you're like, you <laughs> you know, it's hard to do. Yeah, that. It's, it's kind of nerve wracking. But like, how did you get over it's it? It's funny. Well, it's funny. Like I could, I remember my first time playing a college football game, and it was at Penn State in front of a sold out, hundred four thousand person crowd. And I was less nervous for that than I was for the my first press conference I ever did after a college game. Wow! Um, and there was like six people in the room. It just wasn't. You know what I mean? It was. It wasn't a big deal, but it, it was so much more of a big deal to me. Right? I was more nervous for giving a class presentation in front of twenty four students than I ever was playing in a football game that had, you know, potentially millions of viewers, right? It just wasn't, it just got to me. Um, and I think, I think people have a fear of presenting, right? That's one of the most common fears in people is just uh, 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 presenting in front of people. But I think the other thing is like, you know, I think it's funny. We always preach that, you know, one of the biggest, you know, cliches out there is people buy from people, not the product, right? They buy the person, not the product. They buy the story, not the product. Well, there's no better way to tell the story. There's no better way to be a person. There's no better way to connect personally with people than video and having that type of, you know, that type of content out there yet. It's one of the most common things we're afraid to do. So it's, you know, I, I like the cliche. Again, that, well, I got cliches for days, bro, bro. I'm all about it. But version version done is better than version done, right? Like I've, I've released a bunch of poor plan stuff, poor content, poor whatever it might be but it's because the next time I watch it, it's going to be better or I can optimize it because I can learn from it. So I just shoot video and I, most of the time I don't even edit it. And I just, yeah. I go with it. Yeah, that's perfect. And then that's, I guess, I mean, that is the best message I can possibly put out there or anyone could put out there. It's, you don't have to be a professional to do a shoot video. Everyone has access to it. I don't care who you are. Cause you've got a phone, you got a phone, go ahead and just put it up and shoot it and, and just make it happen. And, uh, Sure. You know, I think it's uh, that, that that's that's awesome. That's awesome, dude. As we wrap up here, my friend, um, is there a message? I'm, I'm I'm trying to do this new thing where where you know where I want to give the opportunity to all my guests to be able to kind of as we wrap things up to give a moment and and on top of your head, is there a message? Is there a is there something that's been that you've been wanting to share and to um to to the viewers um anything in regards to life in regards to video in regards to business that you think you've always wanted to have a platform to be able to share and 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 promote and you know just just let it out sure yeah i don't know if i have anything profound i think most of you know what i'm about we've already kind of discussed in terms of my my mindset and my thought process on life uh in general but um there's one thing that um, I don't know if you've ever checked it out. It's called How I Built This with Guy Raz. No. Um, and he asks a question with everybody he talks to, which is, do you feel like 
what you did is because of your skill or because of luck or what is it, right? And uh, one thing I've always believed firmly in is luck prefers the prepared mind. Uh, I think that's a, I mean, that quote has been said by many people before, but I, I, that can go all the way back to, um, gosh, I don't know if it was a, a Greek philosopher that said a version of that or, or, or if it was a Chinese proverb, and I can't remember where I saw it right. originally in the oldest state that I can see it, but it was something that we preached um, and, and when I was with my time with the Philadelphia Eagles, and I kind of held on to that since then. Um, and it, and it, it goes along with my mindset of being the hardest worker in the room, and that good things are going to happen to you if you're prepared for it. Good things are going to happen to you if you work for it. If you're, if you're dedicated and you're putting in the work, there's no substitute for work. But all those people that you think are lucky that hit the internet boom or that hit the real estate boom or whatever it was, it's because they put in the work and they were able in that moment to take advantage of that opportunity. And that's where I believe what prepared, prefers the prepared mind comes into play. And the other thing that I will kind of tailors off of that is I'm anti corporate America on a lot of reasons, but I'm very anti. We were just going through it. We had a strategic planning meeting going into Q3 and I just canceled and I was like, we're not doing strategic plans. Those are garbage. <laughs> they're made up and they're fallacies and they're not real. And the reason being is when you put in a strategic plan, you put, you narrow your focus so hard. And what happens is that is that sounds really good and it is good to narrow your focus. But what happens when you do that is you lose your per- peripheral vision to all the opportunities around you. So you lose your ability of optionality. Right, and a really good book on optionality is anti-fragile, and I, it's probably my favorite book that I've read in the last year. Um, and it's the idea of take Coca-Cola. Right, Coca-Cola did not st- start as a as a um, soft drink company. They started as a uh, as a pharmaceutical company. Right, I did not know that. And they, wow. Yeah, and had they been in a strategic plan <laughs> of staying be- in the pharmaceutical plan, you would not have Coca-Cola today that we know. Right. And it's that ability to adapt to what the market tells you. And, you know, it's the same reason that it's really funny. Like, uh, I could keep going for days. I, know, I love it. I, keep it. I love close. it. I love I'm going to try to keep it honed in here. That people think that day traders and, and, and I'm an active trader um, in the stock market, but are, are educated with a formula to follow, right? And they think that comes over to Silicon Valley and the investors. You talk to you talk to um, if you talk to uh, investors and angel investors. What are they What are they going to tell you? They don't They don't invest in the business. They invest in the entrepreneur. And everywhere you look, it tells you that things are based off of personalities and working with people, and not business plans, not strategic plans, not businesses. It's about the people, right? People buy from people. People invest in people because if you talk to an angel investor, a true angel investor in Silicon Valley. They're investing the, in the entrepreneur, not the business, because what the, they'll see what's happening in the market and adapt to what is best for the market instead of trying to ride home a product that may or may not be successful, right? So I just encourage people to work extremely hard at their craft and take advantage of the opportunities that are ahead of them because that opportunity that gets thrown in front of your face might not be the one that you thought you prepared for but you need to prepare for the, you know, what you're working on in the moment and take the opportunities as they come. Yeah. I see the people, this is the reason why I have this guy on. And this is the reason why I'm always picking his brain and why I'm always motivated to be able to get better because I mean, just listening to you and, and, and coming with that, uh, that just that knowledge and information is absolutely mind blowing. And I appreciate you, my friend. I thank you so much for being on this show and uh, tell me where, tell, tell everyone where they can uh, follow you, you know, and, and, yeah. and get you, get contacted with you. But yeah, best way is Instagram. I'm constantly on Instagram. Um, I'm, I'm trying to be IG. a content creator. <laughs> uh, so I'm on the IG will Shaw underscore eight. Um, and that's where you can find me. I'm constantly posting on there, working on my content. Um, and you can hit me on there. And I try to respond to every single comment on any post. So you can always find me on there constantly. Right on. And I have a, I have a, I have a pitch for you, an idea. And I, I guarantee you're not going to say no. Um, is one of the videos I love to do is to sit down with you and me in a room and just like 
just have a whole bunch of different variety of scotches and just freaking drink it and talk about it and just go with wherever that where the scotch leads us man i think like a little scotch no, youtube the episode. only thing i'll add to that is, is i've got a new favorite cigar so i'll bring over some new cigars too and we'll, and we'll make it happen done done and done man i appreciate you thank you again hey guys uh join me on the next episode of just create make sure to subscribe hit the notification button there on the on the youtube and uh and uh, wait for the you know so you can get notified when the next show comes up uh there's gonna be a lot more new content coming out and uh thank, once again thank you and uh we'll talk to you soon later